Hi and welcome. How do you type Tibetan words? This is going to be extremely useful for those of you who do not know the Wiley transcription scheme yet. And if you just are very used to typing in English, then you might want to start with Wiley transcription before learning the Tibetan layout of the keyboard. But I would advise learning both because it will be handy to be able to just think in both structures in different contexts. So one bonus thing I will talk about is phonetics. Um, often what you see in prayer books is Tibetan phonetics instead of seeing the Tibetan script. So, um, you know, let's say you're helping out a, a Buddhist temple and you want to just give them phonetics because most people are not able to read Tibetan script, so they just want to have something that they can pronounce. So one tool that you can use for that, once you know your Wiley transcription, is the THL, or the Tibetan and Himalayan Library Phonetics, phonetics Converter. So the THL Phonetics Converter. So that will become useful for you um, helping others learn the pronunciation once you know how to do Wiley transcription. I mean, obviously, if you've got something already typed, you can just paste it in and, and convert it, no problem, either from Unicode or from Wiley. So you may have heard me mention Unicode and Wiley a few times, so I'll just show you briefly right now some examples. So if I type in Wiley, I would type the word drup like this, sao ka, oops, so that is what drup looks like in Wiley transcription. And if I switch over to Unicode using my keyboard, uh, I'm using a Windows computer, so I have um, I have the Tibetan keyboard installed and then the same thing typed in Unicode would be sao ka ra ta da shabchu dru pa drup and then I would put a tech. For the Wiley you just need to put a space so it won't show as much until you convert it. When you convert it um, using the uh, what I'm going to tell you in a few moments then it will put in the the tech that doesn't show in the Wiley transcription. But that's essentially the difference. So this one, the first one is Wiley, and the second one is Unicode. So if you go, if you just want to point and click to get the Tibetan script vis visible um, online, you can use LexiLogos. So LexiLogos has a, a Tibetan keyboard. So I'll just, I'm going to paste the link in here just so that you can see the link. Um, and I guess probably I will eventually put it in the text down below so that people can click on it directly. Lexi logo. So that's a keyboard where you can just click on the different letters and build your stacks as just a purely visual thing. But, um, and, and also I tend to use it sometimes for Sanskrit characters just because it's easier than remembering all of the convoluted Wiley for Sanskrit. And I'll show you an example of that in a little bit. So LexiLogos is one useful tool both for beginners and for Sanskrit and other characters. Uh, another very useful tool is the THL transliteration converter. So once you have something typed up in Wiley or Unicode, you can convert it back and forth between the two. So this is also very handy. Sometimes if you just want to transcribe something in Wiley, then you can get it to just spit out the automatically for the, the Unicode for you or vice versa. And in order to understand Wiley transcription, uh, there is another page that I'm going to just show you a link to here which is also at the Tibetan and Himalayan Library. 
Uh, and the title at the top of the page is the extended Wiley transliteration scheme. But if you Google that, it's not so easy to find. But if you go to the main website, which is thlib.org, then you're going to see a tab called Reference. And on that Reference tab on the right hand side, you'll see a menu. And on the menu, you'll see section four tables. And that's how you navigate to this. But I will also, again, once again, paste in the link here directly so that it, this is a link to the chart of all of the Wiley things that you can transcribe to the system of, of doing Wiley transcription. And now I'm just going to give you a simplified version of that table because I'll give you the most often used uh, characters in Tibetan, some of the Sanskrit characters as well. So Wiley transcription. And I think the easiest way to show you is just using the normal Tibetan layout of the alphabet. So ka, 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 nga, ja, cha, ja, nya, whoops, nya, da, ta, da, na, ba, pa, ba, ma, za, 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 wa, sha, za, oops, za, a, ya. And I'll just make a note here about the a. You see, it's an apostrophe. Sometimes the converter will give you a problem if you're using, for example, Microsoft Word because it gives you a curly quote and it needs a, a straight quote. So sometimes a workaround for that is to use just Notepad that doesn't have any special formatting on the apostrophe. So if you use Notepad uh, apostrophes, they will work better uh, in the converter than uh, you'll, you'll often get an error or an illegal character if it uses a curly quote. So just a warning if you come up against that issue. Then Ja. La, sha, sa, ha, a. And then you have some of the retroflex characters. So you just do shift T, capital T, shift TH. So da, ta, da, capital D, and na, capital N. Vowels are just your usual E, U, A, O. These are going to be the most common things that you come across in Wiley transcription for regular Tibetan. Uh, one point to note is, OK, we used the example before of group. Um, group. Um, something else you might see a lot is something like, um, whoops, way, for example so that you can get your I on top of your A, your Wa. Um, and another thing, for example, if you do, for example, the word Yak like this, you'll get a stacked GY, which you do not want, right? You don't want to get Kayata. You want to get Gao Ya. So to get Gao Ya, you have to separate the Gao by putting a dot, a period. So this is now yak. It will give it as a the the ga as a prefix instead of as a stacked one with the y underneath. So just that's a something to be aware of. And then for uh, the she, uh, so we'll just give you a visual example here. You have yo re. Often many sentences end with yo re, and then you have a she at, at the end. So you just use a forward slash as your she. And many times if you end with a nga, so nang dang, you put a space first and then your she. And then when you convert it will the the tech will show up in between the the the, the nga and the she afterwards. 
So that's Wiley transcription. That's it in a nutshell. You're, you can go back to this link to look in much more detail uh, and, and get some more insight into how some of the other characters work. But the basics are this. Next, if you want to use the Tibetan keyboard in Windows, I'm not familiar with uh, other layouts. I know there are other layouts for Tibetan keyboards, so if you're using a different one, you'll have to experiment a little bit. But if you're using the Windows layout um, that you can just install directly with Microsoft, then I will give you the layout here of how the characters work. So if you just use the regular top row here, there we go. Make sure I've got my Tibetan keyboard on. There we go. Once you have that row done, you switch over to Tibetan, and then what you have is Ja, Cha, E, Ra, Ta, Ya, U, I, O, Pa, Za, Cha, Za. And then the next line down, we'll switch back to English, and you have A S D F G H J K L colon quote or apostrophe, and then switch back to Tibetan, and we have A Sa Da Wa or Pa Ga no oh, sorry Nga Ma Cha, uh, sorry, that's a tech. Um, ka, la, sha, and then your she. Then back to English, just to show you. Z, X, C, V, B, N, M, comma, period, slash. And then if you switch over to Tibetan, you will get Sa, sha, ka, ka, ba, na. Then instead of M, what you get is the stacking character. So I'll just switch back to M to sh show the difference here. But when you when you hit when you hit the M key in a In the Tibetan keyboard, it allows you to put a letter underneath the letter that you just typed. So you'll just have to try it and experiment, see how it works a little bit. I'll show you in a moment, uh, perhaps. So that's the M, and then you have Ta, Cha, and Nya. So just as an example, um, if I want to do, uh, oops, ka, and then I do the letter M, and that prepares it to stack, and then I do the ya, and it stacks the Y underneath. And then I can do my she using the letter J, for example. So that's how you build the, most of the, uh, of the Tibetan, Tibetan characters. A uh, special note here about Sanskrit. So if you do um, shift T, you get your retroflex ta. If you do uh, shift A, you get an achung, the small a underneath. If you do uh, shift D, you get your da. If you do, uh, oh sorry, I guess I'll put, hold on, I'll put these in English above. Just give me a moment here. So you do Shift plus uh, um, so ta a ta a da then it'll be I guess quote a uh, quote normally when you when you do shift x c n and comma those are what I'm going to show below so back here and so you have ta 
Achung, Da, and then this character, which is used before um, the name of the Dalai Lama, for example, um, it's a name name marker. Uh, then uh, shift X is uh, Ga. Shift C, I finally figured out now that this is your Kalo, Shalo Ka. Uh, ka Shalo, sorry. Ka Shalo Cha. Uh, and then uh, Na, Shift Na. And Shift Comma is your Ta. So that's for these um, Sanskrit characters. And when you go, another note here is that when you go to the um, transliteration converter, you will see a sample text that is already a Sanskrit mantra, the Guru Pema mantra. And the sample shows you uh, some typical Sanskrit layout for Sanskrit characters. So that can be very useful. Uh, if you don't tip regularly type Sanskrit, this can kind of give you some clues about how you need to build your, your mantra uh, structures in Wiley. So you'll, you can just see how, convert this and see how it works out and also use the guide uh, for you if you need extra help with this. So this is how to type Wiley and how to type in Unicode in the Windows keyboard. I hope you found this useful. Thank you.